as the old saying goes, if you want something to be done right, you better do it yourself. And the same smart guy said, I'm gonna do things my way, my way, my way or on highway. Anyway, that was my philosophy going into this project, being done similar project before that was uh, designed by somebody else. I thought that can be done better. And I know there's a lot of nano leaf copycat projects out there, but none of them really scratched my itch. So I had to come up with my own plan to design the perfect LED tiles. So what was my main criteria going into this project? Well, first of all, it had to be modular. So if you mess up and want to rearrange the tiles whenever you want, however you want, you can easily do it. Now, the second point was to be cheap, cheaply made, 3D printed, cheap Chinese parts. It had to be WLED based. And number three, and the main thing had to look awesome, which I think I managed to achieve, but you will let me know probably in the comments what you think about it. And to name the project, I had to go with the flux leaf because the three LED strips in uh, the panels remind me of the flux capacitor in the Back to the Future DeLorean. Okay, let's talk about the hardware. Since it's WLED based, of course, the brain of operation is ESP32, which is perfect for these kind of projects. And of course we have a digital microphone for the music reactivity, as well as the logic level shifter and two buttons, one for power on off and the next one for changing effects and adjusting the brightness. And the main backbone of this project that makes the panels modular is these magnetic pogo pin connectors with three pins which is ideal <laughs> because we're using WS2812B LED strips which require three pin connection. One thing to keep in mind is these magnetic connectors are rated only for 2 amps so don't try to go too crazy on the power. And of course a thousand microfarad capacitor. I know you Wago people probably are pulling your hair seeing all this <laughs> wiry mess. But I love these uh, silver LED connectors. Yeah, they save so much time on slicing and stripping wires, which also means that everything is directly soldered together. And the other reason is I wanted to keep this power box nice and slim. I probably could have placed the capacitor a little bit better, but I decided to solder directly to the pogo pin connector. So the first pogo pin connector in the power box is connected as you would usually connect the LED strip to your controller. Something to keep in mind is to use the same male or female connectors for incoming signal and outcoming signal, which kind of means that you will be using one male or female connectors double amount as the other. Since I use the flat connector for my outgoing data in a power box, I need to use the opposite connector with pins for incoming signal for the panels. Inside the panels there is three short strips of addressable LEDs, only seven pixels of or seven LEDs each. Now the trick here is to connect all three of them in the middle, all the starting points of all three of them are in the middle, which means all three LED strips gonna react the same every time and it's gonna be synchronized. Which also means that when setting up your WLED in settings, only need to enter that your LED strip is 7 pixels long. And no matter how many panels you connect together, it's always going to be the same 7 in the settings. Now to make it work, I need to split the incoming signal from the pogo pin to 3 separate signals for each strip individually which I achieve by twisting the three of the silver wires together, soldering the ends together, and I have made myself a three-way splitter. So now I can connect the solder ends to the pogo pin, one of the pogo pin pins, and now I have to repeat the process 
for each incoming signal pin. When our incoming signal connector is wired up, it's time to press it into place, which is easily doable by applying a little bit of force with a screwdriver, like so. And don't worry, these wires are coated, so only the tips are exposed, which makes them great for soldering. And now it's time to solder our connector to our three LED strips. So I did skip over here a little bit because my dumbass forgot to turn on camera and film it. But long story short, I had to connect three more jumper wires from two of the LED strip starting points to the outgoing connectors. When it's all finally wired up, it's time to hide the wires. I've designed special cavities here for wires to be hidden and even little lids to cover it up. As for the front plates, I have one millimeter thick white PTG and one millimeter thick walls of clear PTG. I love mixing materials like this, which creates kind of nice definition between the front plate itself and the walls creating this nice look. Now the cover for the power box I printed in two colors to jazz it up a little bit with color and I've designed it in this nice mesh pattern to allow for some airflow or some cooling. And the front plate for the power box is held in place with four MP screws, which is great in case I need to fix anything or do any upgrades on the setup. And last but not least, I have these little O-rings that holds everything together from the back, which holds everything together really nice and helps aligning the connectors perfectly. And the best part is the whole thing is powered through one USB-C cable that is connected directly to our ESP32. To mount everything on a wall, I opted for double-sided tape, but you can use the integrated mounting holes at the back. That's the end of the video guys, hope you liked my project, I definitely love it, one of my favorite projects so far. If you liked it, press like, subscribe, all the good stuff. If you want to build the project yourself, I had the files up on my coffee account, go check it out, that's the best place if you want to support me as well. Yeah, thanks for watching and I see you next time.